All right, so we're going to start today by talking about a few types of publication bias that you can do in a comprehensive meta-analysis. So in this one, we're going to start with run analyses. Assuming all of your data is already in here, you're ready to run your analyses. Once you're in the analysis module, what's under analyses actually changes. So now if you click on the analyses menu, the first thing that comes up is publication bias. Go ahead and click on publication bias. It's going to throw you straight into the funnel plot. Um, this is just a basic funnel plot, a great place to start looking for publication bias. Um, and as we can see on this one, this is the Wilson PowerPoint example that's been a running theme in the class. Um, and we can see that this is looking pretty good. Everything is fitting within the funnel, and we seem to have a similar number of um, effect sizes that fall both to the left and to the right of the mean effect size. But let's go ahead and look at a few more things. So the next thing we want to do is go underneath View. If we click on View, we get a whole bunch of lovely options that show up. So we have Failsafe N, that's going to give us both the basic Failsafe N and Orwins. We have Rank Correlation Test, we have Regression Test, neither one of those we're going to deal with today. And Trim and Fill. Let's start with Trim and Fill. So at this point, one of the things that's important to look at is where you want it to look for missing studies. Should it be looking for missing studies to the left or to the right? If you click on not specified, hoping it's going to figure it out for you, it tells you you need to specify. In this case, let's go ahead and look to the left. Um, and we'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, and then whether you're using a fixed effect or random effects model. We'll go ahead and leave it on fixed for right now. And we'll go ahead and click back to our funnel plot. And now we need to go tell it that we want to look for both the observed and the imputed studies. And there weren't any that needed to be filled in on this one. Um, if there were, we'd see additional, in addition to the white circles, we'd also be seeing red circles that would show up on that particular funnel plot. Let's pop under view again, and let's look at the fail safe N. Here, we're, the first part is the classic fail-safe N, which was based on the Z value. How many studies would it take with an effect size of zero, basically, to bring our Z value down so that it wasn't statistically significant? Um, and most of the options that you see under the classic fail-safe N can be left as they are. For this particular one, it's not great. Uh, only three studies would need to be found. So this fail safer file drawer n um, is really showing that the effect size we've found isn't terribly robust. Um, it's very likely that even just a few more studies with low effect sizes would bring this down so that it's not a statistically significant effect size. Now not too surprising considering that the effect size we found, the hedges g for that running example is only 0.15, which if you think about a hedges g isn't a very large effect size. We definitely are looking at, at a very small effect size. For Orwin's failsafe N, here we need to do one type of edit. So if we click under edit, we need to change one of these two values. Um, the one that I would suggest changing is the criterion for a trivial hedges G. So what do you think counts as a trivial hedges G? If this was, we're already at 0.15, so that's fairly close. Um, but say, if you had a hedges G of 0.10, would you consider that to be trivial? Or a hedges G of 0.05 certainly would be considered trivial. But even a 0.10 um, would probably be considered trivial. So we'll just go ahead and change this value to a 0.10. And we're saying that in the missing studies that are out there, if their mean hedges G value was zero, so there was no effect found in how many studies, how many studies would we have to find that didn't have any effect? Treatment was not showing any effect in order to bring our hedges G value down to one to 0.10 is what we're looking at. We're going to go ahead and click on compute. And with that, we'd only need to find six more studies to bring our hedges G value down to 0.10. So if there are out there in somebody's file drawer six studies that found no effect, um, we'd already um, have a non-statistically significant result or things would be going poorly.